Hey gang, Spade of the Bolt Matrix here, and today we are taking a look at the ZGMF X20A Strike Freedom Gundam from Gundam Seed Destiny. This is the evolution of the Freedom Gundam from Gundam Seed. This is the ninth kit in the Gundam Seed Destiny 1 100 line, and is a very nice big box. Um, as you heard, things are rattling around, that's because I've already built the thing. The box does come with a Kira Yamato figure, and it is typical Bandai quality of a nice looking box. So uh, now that we've taken a look at the box, let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside. Along with the mobile suit, which we'll see in a second, the Strike Freedom Gundam also comes with this Kira Yamato and Laux Klein standee, two beam sabers, some stickers, and uh, two different sets of hands, uh, splayed hands and some grabbing and some gun grabbing hands. Uh, you'll see the other gun grabbing hand here in a second. The Strike Freedom Gundam is one of those Gundams that pretty much breaks all the rules that, of the universe that it exists in. This thing is a powerhouse of weaponry. It has two 31mm Vulcans mounted in the head. It has two Claudius multi-phase beam cannons mounted in the torso. I'm sorry, one beam cannon mounted in the torso. That's the gold thing right there. It has two rail cannons folded underneath the hips. That's actually these two things. It has two beam shield generators in the forearms. That's the red thing there and the red thing there. And here is one of the beam shields. And it has two high-energy beam rifles stored, in the, stored on the hips. And that's that one there and that one there. And those two can be combined. Now you'll notice there is a hand back there. I actually couldn't get that hand apart because most of this model was painted by myself. Because the coloring for the model that I ended up with was yellow. It had this strange yellowing effect going on. I have no idea what happened, so I ended up painting pretty much everything you see. Uh, the feet were painted, the legs, the palette, the guns, the hands. Uh, everything was done with a combination of uh, Gundam markers for the blues. Uh, the black is actually a primer and a top coat from Games Workshop, and then the white is actually white primer and white paint, or actually white clear coat, uh, both from Games Workshop. And then I went ahead and did all of the panel linings myself using a .005 millimeter Gundam marker, or drafting marker. Now, their other we the other weapon system are the Dragoons, which are these blue units that are on his backpack. And there are eight Dragoon units located in the on the backpack. Those are the blue sections. I'll show you them individually here in a second. And they pretty much broke the universe of Gundam Seed. There were a couple of units in Gundam Seed and Gundam Seed Destiny that had the Dragoon units and they were just so overpowerful. And they all used the same exact animation. So posability wise this guy is really really good save for the heaviness of the Dragoon units. The Dragoon unit adds a ton of weight to the back of this figure. If we push the Dragoon uh, units all the way back, it will just cause the figure to topple over, so we really can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the other weapon systems here first. We're going to take the um, rifles off of the sides, and then we will actually fold out the rail cannons to, his side, to the figure's side skirts like that. And that will take some weight off of the back. And then we will, or not, and then we will reattach the hands. Now I painted the hands using a, a Gundam marker and unfortunately you can tell uh, simply by the feel. I didn't bother to top coat them or uh, clear coat them which I should have. Now they did come pre-painted, uh, they did come with in this gold plastic, but I decided to paint them anyway, and the reason this one uh, was still attached is because, well, I couldn't get it apart because I had painted them together. To combine the rifles, you first take one of them, and one of them has a little bit part where you can bend it down like that, and then the other one 
the other rifle will just slide into that cavity and they'll connect like that. Getting him to hold this thing in this position is a royal pain in the butt, but I'll give it a try. I don't understand. In the show, he can hold it just fine. And before anybody says anything, yes, I realize that you're supposed to have him holding it on the side like it shows on the box. But a lot of these figures came with stands, and this guy came with a stand, but I can't find it. So you were able to put him on a stand, which was good. I do like the look of the head. Now, I did all of the painting of the head myself. I did the painting of the eyes as well. Those aren't actual stickers. That is actual paint. So I did that myself. And I think it turned out pretty well. Now, as I was saying, the, uh, the posability of the figure is actually pretty good, but limited due to the weight of the Dragoon units. And unfortunately, the whole figure does feel a tad bit fragile. Posability-wise, head is on a ball joint. It's got a good range of motion. Uh, the wings can move back like that, and they do fall off. Shoulder is on a very limited joint there, and then that's a ball joint. And the shoulder does move, or the shoulder armor does move independently of the arm. Swivel joint up top, double elbow joint, and then a ball joint for the hand. Leg, ball joint, double hinge joint for the knee, and then a limited ball joint because of the armor. So you can get some very good poses out of a Gundam, but I absolutely stink at posing Gundams. I am terrible at posing them, even though I want to pose them and look, make them look all badass. I just stink at it. He can hold his uh, beam savers, but I normally don't uh, display the, these guys with beam savers, especially if they're packing so many beam weapons. Uh, the sabers are a good um, seven inches in length, and they are slightly curved, which is cool. Now, the other thing that this guy can do is the beam shield. And that is done by getting a fingernail underneath this red piece here and just popping it off. And that will leave a peg exposed. So then you come in here, move that out of the way, plug that in, and then plug the red piece right over top of it. You just got to get it lined up. And the fact that it's clear doesn't help at all. There we go. So that's the way the uh, beam shield work, and he used and he used that quite a bit in the show, and unfortunately it just fell off, and the figure fell over. The Strike Freedom Gundam is one of those weird Gundams that I absolutely adore and absolutely hate at the same time. I have watched every single Gundam show there is, and very few Gundams are as overpowered as this one is. With, a, with the ability to hit eight different targets at once with a remote-controlled Dragoon system, rail cannons that one each could destroy a battle cruiser, and then rifles that one each are equivalent to the Buster Rifle from Wing, this thing is just supremely overpowered. But it also looks awesome and looks very cool at the same time. So if you can pick this one up, this was a fun build to do. Uh, I do suggest painting it, especially if you have the yellow issue that I had, but the painting wasn't that bad. Uh, spray paint helps, especially, uh, yeah, spray paint helps. Now, I did want to call out to one mistake that I made. When I assembled the unit, I actually completely missed the thrusters in the legs. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. I just completely missed them, and they're supposed to be there, but I screwed up. But anyway, so I thoroughly recommend this figure or this uh, 1-100 kit. If you're a fan of Gundam, if you're a fan of building Gundam, I really recommend it. You do have to pay a little bit of attention to the fact that the backpack is very heavy. Now, this figure does come in a variety of configurations, a 1-144, a 1-100, a 1-1, or I'm sorry, a 1-60, and then a Master Grade. So you get a bunch of different options. Now, finding him is going to be a little tough, but I recommend going to thegundamstore.com, Hobbylink Japan, BigBadToyStore.com, Toy Arena. A lot of those places still have this figure for sale. And for a reasonable price, he's around 30 maybe 40 bucks. 
but I bet with the coming up holidays, a lot of places are going to have them on sale. So this is Beta Saint. You should pick this one up, especially if you're a Gundam fan.